All right, hey everybody, I'm back after a little absence there. One on the road, want to remind you all that I got Rockers in the Rockies coming up. That's my harmonica seminar featuring Ronnie Shellis, Michael Peliquin, Chris McCulloch, and none other than Peter Madcat Ruth. Don't forget, also Paul Davies will be there. It's in Denver. You can sign up on my website, www.jasonricci.com. Big section for Rockers in the Rockies. Also right here, you'll see a link to that. Check it out. Working on an A-flat harmonica. I'm going to be playing it in the cross position mostly. And uh, this is an A-flat Joe Spires Marine Band. Today we're going to be talking about tongue blocking. Okay, we might get into tongue blocking versus lip pursing. I don't know if I'll have time or not. I already tried this once before and I don't, but now I'm wasting time. Anyway, let's discuss exactly what it is. All right, well, tongue blocking is when you put your tongue on the harp directly and then you play a whole another one of the holes or multiple numbers of holes out of either side of your mouth, okay? You can tongue block out of the left side of your mouth, placing your tongue on the right side, blocking the holes on the right, or you can tongue block out of the right side of your mouth, which is what most people do, blocking the holes on the left. You can tongue block any note on the harmonica, including the one, the one draw or the one blow, and you do that by actually placing your tongue over that edge of the wood or the plastic on whatever or metal whatever harp you may have and actually hanging my tongue over there and then if I were to move up to the two draw I'd be playing be blocking just the one hole with and with my tongue and some of the wood and then playing the two out of the corner of my mouth then if I wanted to move up to the three, I'd be blocking the one and the two. If I wanted to move up to the four, I'd be blocking the one and the two and the three. And you can do this on either draw or, or a blow. <laughs> Additionally, a lot of people think you can't bend while doing this. Well, you certainly can. Little Walter, Big Walter Horton, all those guys. Uh, Kim Wilson, Dennis Grunling, Mark Hummel. Okay? Okay, so this is the uh, tongue blocking technique. So there's a lot of people that are really passionate about this technique and feel that this is the only way you should play the harmonica. Um, I'm not one of those people. I think that uh, all techniques are valid and all techniques have their places, pluses, minuses, advantages, disadvantages, what have you. I think the best thing to do is to learn everything and then to decide which is best and where and why. Unless you know that um, you're going to be just a pure blues player uh, and playing nothing but traditional pre-war or Chicago blues, um, I, would, I would recommend learning um, lip pursing as well as tongue blocking because there are advantages, but this section isn't about lip pursing. It's about the advantages of tongue blocking only. Okay, so let's discuss that. So the, one of the main advantages and the one that they got, these guys will so passionately defend and they would be right most of the time is tone. Now the general rule of thumb with this little thing is that the more of this thing that you can get in your mouth and still get a single hole, the bigger your tone is going to be. Now you notice from lip pursing, I still have a great deal in my mouth on the harmonica. But when I tongue block, I even have more, okay? Now also you'll notice that a lot of guys tell you to drop your jaw when you're playing. That's the two draw and the two draw bend lip pursing. And here's the same combination of notes, tongue blocking. Now I'm going back and forth. The first one will be tongue blocking. Okay, they both have pretty similar tone because I've really worked on my lip pursing tone being big. You can get great tone lip pursing as well. It's not true that lip pursing leads to thin tone in my opinion. However, I will tell you that the temptation to have thin tone while lip pursing is greater because there's less of your mouth on the harmonica and people tend to play like... Instead of... They play. 
Okay, now when you tongue block, you naturally have more of your mouth on the harp, so you're naturally getting, also your tongue isn't in the way, because your tongue is not what's bending, it's your throat that's bending. And when you lip purse, your tongue is bending. So you actually have to move it. Anyway, I never knew about tongue blocking until much later, and it's something that I recently added to my repertoire, like within the last three years or so. I mostly use it when I'm playing straight ahead Chicago style blues. Like um, for those of you that have known my material, like I use it a lot on the blues, penitentiary on that song. Anything in third position, like the solo at the end of Playboy, um, like any blues in third position, like just you know straight up boogie style blues, I'll use it a lot. I use it on the three hole up. Sometimes I'll use it on the two draw. Now why would I do that? Why would I only half use tongue locking? Well, the reason is, is one of the great advantages of tongue blocking is that it keeps your mouth in one position so that you're sort of cutting the harp in half because you're playing, you have so much of your mouth on the harp. It's much easier to jump from great distances without getting lost. Anyway, that wasn't such a hot example. But the other reason is that when you're moving from a single hole into an octave, like let's say the three draw into the one and four octave, and you're moving up to, you don't have to jump. You can watch my armature change. Now if I tongue block, you'll see less of a change in that armature. Actually, almost no change. That's an advantage because you're just instantly moving into that position. So if you're bending while you're tongue blocking, you're, your runs are going to be a little bit smoother. As opposed to... Anyway, I've worked really hard at moving around, lip pursing, and switching, so you're gonna hear less of a transition from a guy like me than somebody who's just learning. But take it from me, it's, if, it's great to be able to just move up while you're already in the tongue block position. And, and I certainly do that a lot. Okay, so I will use that three hole draw, tongue blocked. Um, I think Gary Primich plays tongue block from the three hole up. Okay, anyway, I don't know if I already talked about this, but the rhythmic element of it. Take the classic Sonny Boy riff. That's lip pursing. Listen to the difference, tongue blocking. And I'm not even doing it correctly. I mean, I mean, I'm tongue blocking correctly. I'm just not playing that riff as good as, you know, somebody that's really studied that style of uh, playing. But you can hear that rhythmic. Now, if you're tongue, if you're lip pursing, you can imitate that a little bit. But it more or less just sounds like you're slopping it up. It's much more strong. What's happening is the player is putting their tongue on and off the harmonica. Now when I'm lip pursing, I'll imitate that sound. But it's not quite the same. If you listen, here's tongue volume. That was lip pursing. So anyway, like you take a riff like. I'm, t I'm lip pursing, now I'm gonna tongue block. Go back to lip person. Go back to tongue blocking. I'll do one of each, starting with tongue blocking. I don't know if you can hear a difference. <clears throat> I've worked really hard so that you don't. Anyway, that's tongue blocking in a nutshell. I'm running out of time. Hope you enjoy.